Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will summarize the evolutionary pattern of early Paleozoic jawless fish. Early vertebrates appeared during the early Cambrian. These tiny, ancient, worm-like vertebrates include some of the remarkable fossils from the Xinjiang fossil site in China, including Milokiminga, Ikuichthys, and Zongwanichthys. These early vertebrates, or chordates, exhibit a notochord, segmented muscles called myotomes, gill slits, dorsal and ventral fins, and brains with small primitive eye spots. These early Cambrian fossils are completely soft-bodied and lack any scales or bones. So when did the first hard bone-like tissue appear in early vertebrates. And what is bone anyway? Modern vertebrates have teeth and bone that's formed from various molecules of calcium phosphate, apatite, which is made by specialized cells called osteocysts. The oldest evidence of a fish scale comes from the late Cambrian fossil called Antileptus. Fossilized teeth of early vertebrates also begin to appear during the late Cambrian and are common throughout the Paleozoic. Their abundance in the fossil record makes them useful for biostratigraphy. Hard scales and teeth were a key innovation in the early evolution of vertebrates. Both scales and teeth evolved as these early fish-like creatures began to feed on each other. Hard teeth allowed these early fish to cut into larger prey, while scales helped protect them from being eaten by those vertebrates that had evolved hard teeth. No longer were vertebrates passive filter feeders. They were both predators and prey. Bone is a complex living tissue, and unlike calcium carbonate skeletons, bone is formed by both fibers of collagen, which is a protein, these are chains of carbon, as well as apatite, which is a crystal. Bone is very plastic during the life of an animal. It can reform as the animal grows, or the animal may require the phosphorus or calcium in the bone during its life so the bone can become brittle or reduced in old age. Cells, blood vessels, and nerves provide a network through the bone, although these tissues are greatly reduced in dentine. Dentine is a more pure form of bone composed of more apatite than collagen and has fewer, if any, cells encased within it. Dentine is found in scales and teeth because it's much harder than normal bone. In teeth, in most scales, dentine is supported by a pulp cavity below the tissue. Enamel is the hardest of the hard tissues produced by vertebrates and is e an even more pure form of crystalline apatite. Enamel is found on some fish scales, but it's more common across vertebrates in teeth. Enamel, because it's so hard, formed by the crystalline apatite, is the most common part of the animal that fossilizes. Hence, much of the early vertebrate evolution in the Cambrian and Ordovician is known only from fossilized enamel teeth. The skeleton of vertebrates is composed embryologically of endoderm cells, the inner cells, which form the splanctocranium. This is the, the palate, the jaws, the brachial arches along the throat, like the hyoid, um, the mesoderm, this is the middle layer, those form the neurocranium, which is the brain case, the axial skeleton, and the appendicular skeleton. And the ectoderm, this is the outer layer, that forms the, the scales of the animal, the teeth, and the dermal skeleton 
of which forms parts of the skull, as well as some bones in the skeleton, such as the clavicle and uh, patella bones. Early primitive fish show a diversity of scales, some which become layered into hard dentine, spongy aspidin, and lamiter aspidin. We'll explore the different types of scales uh, later when we discuss fish evolution. Now these early fish-like animals living during the Paleozoic had an internal skeleton composed of cartilage which is made mostly of collagen. The cartilage is prismatic and rigid, and cartilage can go on to form pericardinal bone within it by the crystallization of appetite. Now, true bone is formed in a single group of early fishes and their ancestors, which include me and you. These early fish are called the bony fish, or the osteoichthys, and we'll discuss their evolution later on. Now, the bone in these fish and their descendants is what is called endochronical bone, which means that the bone completely replaces the cartilage as the animal grows, rather than being embedded within the cartilage. Now, all of these early fish in the early Paleozoic have cartilaginous internal skeletons. So fossils of these early vertebrates are reduced to just the hard teeth and scales, and body fossils are very rare. Now all of these early vertebrates are jawless, and the next major innovation among early vertebrates is the origin of the jaw a lower mobile jaw joint that allows these animals to bite for the first time. All right, you should be able to summarize the evolutionary pattern of early Paleozoic jawless fish, in particular the origin of hard teeth and scales. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own personal page at benjamin.berger.org. Links are found in the descriptions below.